Thank you, Anna, and welcome to the webinar for the second four-week session of the 2018 ICPSR summer program. Um, what I'd like to do is just to give you an overview of what you can expect if you're participating in the program, which is a week away, and then to give you the opportunity to ask any questions that you might have about your participation in the program, the area in which you're going to be staying, and just kind of general inquiries that, that may have come to mind. So with that, let me, let me start and just give you uh, a brief rundown of the summer program staff, some of whom are with us today and others you will see quite frequently during the time that you're here with us in Ann Arbor. Dita Burrell, who is the Project Manager for Educational Services, is here with us. Uh, Edward Seeley, who is in charge of all of our computing services and makes sure that we have that capability and that we can connect you not only to the courses that we're operating here in Ann Arbor, but that you have connections outside of the summer program. Uh, Stephanie Carpenter, who is also with us, who's a digital and educational specialist. And my hunch is that many of you have already communicated with Stephanie either about registering for the program or about obtaining general information. She um, plays a, an important role as really kind of the go between the liaison between the program and all of you. Um, the other folks who you will encounter um, Filippo Stargell, who is the financial specialist, who helps make sure that not only the program is up and running, but that also we have the ability to make that happen, to make it operate. Uh, Scott Campbell, who's the videographer, who is responsible for the videos that you see, not only on the summer program website, but also on YouTube and so forth. Um, he was with us last summer and has actually been with the summer program for a number of years in different capacities. But he's now the, the, main, the main videographer for the program. Uh, Shannon Nurai, who is the administrative assistant with us this summer, and she is in the actually main, the first office that you would see when you come into the summer program headquarters. And she'll be with us for the another week in the first session and then for another four weeks in the second session. Just a, a quick kind of reminder about the registration and the check-in for the second session, which does occur one week from today, and it is being held in the Modern Language Building, which is one of the main classroom facilities at, on the University of Michigan campus, it's centrally located, so it it is on central campus and it's easy to locate, easy to find on the university maps. The check-in schedule is as you see on the slide. At 9 a.m., we're just checking in people who do not need advisement on course selection, but, but who want to make sure that they tell us, which is an important thing to do, that they're actually here in Ann Arbor and that they're ready to start taking courses in the program. So 9 a.m. to 10 is the advisement only. And then from 10 a.m. through noon of next Monday, we have not only a general orientation, but also advisement available for anyone who needs to get some suggestions about which workshops, which lectures they might want to take and the best fit in, not only for their background, but for their expectations about what to get out of the program. And those are broken down by the first letter of your last name. So we do encourage you to come to the advisement if you need help and to come during the time that you see uh, on the slide and that we put out in our announcements for the advisement session, because it does help organize things and allow us to actually talk to people much more easily if, if you're coming during those specified times. The other thing to note about next Monday is that there are no morning classes because we're holding the advisement and the registration session check-in during that time. Classes do start at 1 p.m. and they will continue to meet for the remainder of the afternoon on Monday 
So you need to check the class schedule to see when the class is going to be offered. If it's an afternoon class, you will meet next Monday. If it's a morning class or a morning lecture workshop, it will not meet next Monday. So that's just something important to keep in mind. Summer program headquarters, which is where we are right now, is in a facility called the Helen Newberry Residence Building. And it is during the academic year at the university, a women's residence hall. During the summer, it has been the main headquarters for the summer program for a number of years. For those of you who were here last year in the summer program, we were not at Newberry, but this year we're back. So we're back at the uh, Helen Newberry building. Again, very easy to find, very um, centrally located. The only uh, caution that I tell people about is that there is quite a bit of construction around not only Helen Newberry, but really around many buildings and streets here in Ann Arbor. So the front of Helen Newberry, which would be off State Street, which is one of the main streets in Ann Arbor, you cannot enter through that on that street. So you have to enter in the, actually in the entrance way that you see on the screen um, through the gates that are to the left there, that's the, the main way now that we have of entering the building. And in Helen Newberry, you will find not only all of our offices, we're located primarily on the first floor of Helen Newberry. And then as you move up, um, you will find the instructor and TA offices on the second and some on the third floors. And there's also a computing lab, which is on the main floor. And there's, there's a library and areas where you can study and, and meet and talk to other, not only participants, but talk to teaching assistants and instructors about your assignments or, or just about the course material. So Helen Newberry is the place to be. It's the, the main headquarters for the program. The location of specific workshops and lectures occurs across central campus here at the University of Michigan in several different buildings from Angel Hall, Chemistry, East and Modern Language Building are the, are the main building locations. And up until this year at the university, uh, we abided by what's referred to as Michigan time, which means that we do not start courses until 10 after the scheduled time. So if a course is scheduled to begin at three, we would not start till 3.10. We are continuing to follow that informal policy this summer, um, just to give you an opportunity and a chance to get from one class to the next. So you do have some flex in between the courses so that you can go from, let's say, Angel Hall to chemistry and that you have uh, sufficient time to get there. Oftentimes people ask about the size of classes and it's variable. The, some of the workshops and a few of the lectures can be rather large. They can be up to 100 uh, or between 80 and, and 100 or so participants. Um, other workshops and other lectures uh, can be quite small. They can be 10 to 15 participants. So there is some variability and it depends somewhat on the topic of the workshop and on the interest of participants, but um, we make arrangements to ensure that the classrooms are of sufficient size and that if it's a workshop and a lecture that does have a large number of participants registered taking it, that we have adequate help in order to accommodate everybody which means that workshops that are larger and lectures that are larger will have teaching assistants and in some cases multiple teaching assistants to help out. It is recommended, strongly recommended by the summer program staff that you take and focus on two workshops as your primary 
real emphasis during the time you're with us, and that those two workshops, you also decide among those two workshops, which of those is going to be your main workshop. It is possible to register for an additional workshop and to set in on a third workshop. It requires a great deal of commitment and of course additional time if, if you decide to do that. And it also means that if you're in three workshops during the day, each run approximately two hours a piece, that you are really involved in quite a bit of contact time for those workshops. So it's difficult to do more than, more than two workshops. At supplemental lectures, we again encourage you to take as many as you think are necessary. Um, I want to emphasize the word supplemental because they are designed to help augment, supplement the workshops that you're in. So there are lectures that are aimed to help you with the more fundamental workshops. And then there are lectures that are designed to help you with the more advanced workshops. And those are connections that we can help you with during the advisement so that you know which lecture might be the most appropriate for, for which workshop. There are also computing lectures that we offer on all the major statistical software programs that are the primary packages used in the program. Uh, that includes R and Stata, SPSS, and SAS. If there are other software programs that your workshop would use, like M Plus, for example, then, then the instructor and the TA of that workshop would be much more better equipped to help you in terms of questions. So we try to focus on the packages that are going to be used the most frequently across all the workshops. The handbook that um, you'll receive contains information, some of which I've covered today, um, but it also contains additional information about the specific course locations and the events that we have scheduled during the summer outside of the classes, outside of the educational emphasis that we take. And it also contains information about facilities around the university and around Ann Arbor, like library facilities, um, where the campus computing sites might be, and if you're interested in getting gym facilities on campus, how you do that. It also contains information which will be updated throughout the four weeks on the Blaylock Lectures, which is a series of lectures that started as an advanced lecture, an advanced statistics analysis focus, and it continues with that focus. So we do have people talking about very cutting edge topics and statistics and methodology. It's expanded so that it now also includes presentations and discussions on diversity, equity, and inclusiveness, and presentations on data resources, how to get data, how to identify the, the right data for your research, how to make sure that that data, that the data that you're using is not only available, but that it's appropriate and that it's good data for the kinds of research that you want to do. So the Bladelock series, you'll get information before you come to the program and then you'll get information updated constantly as, as we're revising the schedule. Um, for those of you who need, and I assume this is everyone, um, computing access while you're here, you will get that information at the check-in on Monday. It gives you access to the University of Michigan email, tells you again where the computing sites and labs are around campus and the M wireless internet connection, all of which are important if you, if you wanna talk to folks outside of the summer program, as well as folks inside the program. The textbooks for the courses and the reading materials for the courses, um, we do have a number 
a limited number of the required textbooks for the workshops and the lectures available at the summer program library, which again is housed here. It says the Perry Building, but it's it's in the Newberry Building this year. And that material you can check out. It's on a, a limited time basis, so you can't have it for the full four weeks, but um, it does give you the opportunity to check out that material and see if, to do the readings and to also determine if maybe you want to purchase the books or purchase the material. We recommend that if you want to purchase any of the textbooks that you do that online. And given the current state of affairs in terms of textbooks, textbook ordering, um, I think most most people are pretty familiar with with how to go online and the and the various resources and outlets that are that are out there. Um, there are course packets available for some of the workshops, and your instructor will notify you, inform you if they if they do have course packets that they would like you to get, and those can be we have those printed and we have those available in the basement of the Institute for Social Research, which is about a block away from, from us here in Helen Newberry. Uh, I mentioned summer program events, and these are always kind of the highlights of the time that we're here in Ann Arbor. The, the first event occurs next Monday evening. That's the welcome party. And that is also at the Institute for Social Research. It runs from 7.30 until nine o'clock or so that evening. It's a really great opportunity for you not only to meet other participants, but to be, become better acquainted with instructors, with teaching assistants, and with uh, the summer program staff, as well as other staff members in the, at ICPSR, the larger organization that Adam mentioned uh, the summer program is, is a part of. So again, I hope you come to that. It's 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 a really nice nice event and a nice way to get things kicked off. We offer two picnics during each of the four week sessions. The first one for the second session is July 28th, and the next one will be August 11th. Both at the a, a park that's that's relatively close to us here called Burns Park, and they run from one to five on those Saturday afternoons. Again, an, another really nice chance to meet people and to socialize and to just kind of relax a little bit. I've already mentioned the Blaylock Lectures, and you'll get uh, more information about that as, as we start moving along. These will run in the evenings usually about 7.30 to 9 o'clock in the evenings. I realize that that's late um, and that after you've been in classes for an entire day, you, you're tired. The, um, it happens to be the only time when we can schedule the Blaylock lectures. And even though it's, it's, they're running in the evenings, uh, let me assure you again that uh, these are very well received, very well attended, and they do cover topics that you would not probably hear about or get an opportunity to discuss either at your home institution or in the organization where you are. Topics that deal with how to get published, um, how to think about pursuing grants and what to do if you get a grant, how to think about the issues of data transparency and reliability, how to consider more carefully the issues of race, gender, uh, and ethnicity when you're doing research and being more conscientious about it. And also, if you're interested in getting data sets that are of interest to you where you can go to find that. For the last year or so, we've also introduced the weekly coffee and donuts. These are every Wednesday morning at Newberry, and we um, provide donuts from for the famous donut uh, place here in Ann Arbor called Washtenaw Dairy. And again, it's early. It starts at 8 o'clock and goes for about an hour right before the first classes begin. 
but it's a, <clears throat> excuse me, a really good opportunity to stop by, get a little coffee or tea and grab a donut either and on the way to class or uh, to keep it for later so that you have some, some extra energy for the rest of the day. Certificates, grade letters, and EITM requests, you will receive information about that once you're here in Ann Arbor. This is a very straightforward in, on all three levels now. Certificates confirm your participation in lectures and workshops, and you pick those up during the last week that you're here with us in the program, and we will send out email announcements informing you that it's about time for you to think about them and for you to notify us that, these are, that this is something you need. Grade letter memorandums are also available in the workshops. We do not provide them for lectures. This is an indication of how well you have performed in the workshop, and they are based upon the, your performance on the assignments, the exercises, that you would do in those workshops. And we, re we ask that you request those during the last week of the program and that we will then email that grade letter report to you sometime in September of 2018. And then you can present that either to your own graduate program advisor or um, you know, make sure that you, that you have that available if you ever need to provide the indication that you not only participated in the summer program, but what your performance was. Uh, EITM certification is available for the workshops, and again, only for workshops at the level of regression two and above, and you need to receive an A minus or better in that workshop in order to obtain EITM certification. Again, straightforward for you to notify us, for you to tell us that this is something you want. And we then provide that based upon our looking at the courses that you've taken and the grade reports that you've received in those courses, and we issue you the EITM certificate. The Michigan Library and Gym, you, do, you can receive guest privileges, um, at both, and we have already made the arrangements by sending over the participant lists to the library and the gym so that they know who you are and that you can purchase, um, in, case, in the case of the gym membership, you can purchase a membership for the month. The library privileges, um, or not something that you pay for, um, but that you're granted privileges to use that library and to borrow information from that library. Parking and transportation, uh, the University of Michigan parking passes, um, unfortunately are not available for summer program participants, um, but not to fear, there is, there are really good um, transportation facilities available. Um, you see a list here. Um, I'll go right down to the University of Michigan blue buses, um, which are free, and that's always nice when transportation is free. Um, they run between Central and North Campus, so that if you want to get around and want to move a little bit faster than, than walking around Central Campus, this would be an option. Uh, and definitely this, this will be an option if you happen to be staying in North Campus which you would need to take some kind of transportation, a bus or something to get there. There's also parking available around campus, um, parking on the streets and lots, and the fees are based upon, it's an hourly fee and it varies a little bit depending upon how close the parking lot is to campus. Obviously the closer you get, the more expensive the rates, a little further away, it's less expensive. It's also City of Ann Arbor buses, and we, also, we will provide additional transportation possibilities in your handbook. So with that, let me open it up and see if you have questions that any of us can answer. So feel free to 
now tell us what your questions, what your inquiries might be. Hello, my name is Stephanie Carpenter, and I will be leading the Q&A for this webinar. I'm really glad that you joined us, and I look forward to meeting you next week. So what I need you to do right now is uh, rack your brain for questions and send them in, and we will do our best to get you an answer. Um, before I start, I want to tell you guys, um, we often get asked uh, about the dress code here at the summer program. Uh, it's casual. Uh, it's summertime, and we're all here, and it can be kind of warm in Ann Arbor, so I recommend that you bring clothes and shoes uh, that are going to make you feel comfortable while you're sitting in class all day or walking around campus, um, so you don't have to dress up or dress to impress here. We all wear jeans and t-shirts and shorts. Uh, so like I said, dress uh, for comfort. So somebody asked us, uh, where can they find uh, the textbook list? Uh, Dieter, would you like to respond to that? Sure, I can help with that. Uh, the list of textbooks for any particular course will be on the syllabus for that course. So if you go to the course description, our website under the schedule for each particular course and at the bottom there's a, a URL a link that will open up the syllabus for that that course you can see what all the reading materials are whether there's a textbook or a course pack or other some other type of reading materials so that's where you find it on the course description page click on the link for the syllabus thank you Dieter Somebody has asked, will we be provided with data sets or can we bring our own data sets to analyze? Sandy? Most of the data sets that you're going to be using in the workshops will be identified by the instructors and the teaching assistants, and they are accessible to you in that workshop. So the data sets are not an issue. You can certainly um, get to them, you can access them, you can do what you need for the uh, assignments and the exercises. Um, as I referred to during the, the brief discussion earlier, there are also hundreds of other data sets available that you might be interested in here at ICPSR. And that's why we're, we're, we will have people from ICPSR, staff members, come over and talk about other data sets. But the ones that you need for the workshops, we make available to you and are going to be accessible. Thank you. Somebody has said they would like to make changes to their course registration, and they want to know where and when they can do that. Uh, you're welcome to log back into the um, summer program portal uh, and go to your registration page and go to the courses section and make the changes yourself. Uh, you can do that at any point. Or if you'd like to wait until check-in next week, next Monday, um, we can help you make course changes at that time. So you can either do it now or you can wait till next Monday and we'll help you. We've had somebody ask, which courses are appropriate for beginners? Sandy? Uh, it's a really good question. Um, I think it depends upon how you are considering thinking about yourself as a beginner. If you are not familiar, do not feel comfortable with kind of the basic foundations of statistics and, and or you may have been exposed to that at some prior time but are not, do not think that you remember it or that um, you're very conversant in it, then um, I would suggest that you consider taking the statistics and data analysis workshop. In the second session, that's statistics data analysis two. And it, that workshop is designed not only for participants who are coming from the stat data analysis one workshop this session, but it also will start with a very kind of basic introduction to statistical principles and then move gently and, but effectively through that material and then get you to a point where if you wanted to ever move on beyond an understanding of basic statistics primarily the linear models, regression models, that you could do that at a subsequent time. Great, thank you. Somebody has asked about accessibility here on campus. 
I can say that the Newberry building is accessible and we have an elevator in it um, to get you to the second and third floors. Uh, in the participant handbook that we're going to send out uh, later this week, we provide um, information and links to um, accessibility resources here on campus, including accessible entrances for all of the buildings uh, here on campus. And then if, uh, if you have any questions about accessibility or if you need any accommodations uh, made for you while you're here, please let us know. You can reach out to us via email or you can call us and we will do what we need to to make sure that um, you have the best um, time here in Ann Arbor. Uh, somebody has asked, what should we consider when we are picking one of the two workshops as our major uh, workshop? Sandy? Uh, another really good question. I would um, ask that you think about and consider a workshop as your major workshop to be the one where you, that you believe is going to be the most critical, the most important for where you are in your own professional career. And that may mean that it w needs to be, um, you need to kind of carefully think about which workshop is going to be the best for you. And if you're undecided about that, especially undecided during the first couple of days, one of the really great components of the summer program is that you can, and we encourage you to do this, to move around from one workshop to the next, again, during the first few days of, of the program, um, to see which workshop you really think is going to be your primary and the one that you're going to get the most out of. And it also probably is going to be a reflection of how comfortable you feel with that course, with the instructor and the teaching assistants and their ability to relay information to you. If you ever have any questions about that or concerns, you just need to either talk to the instructors or certainly come in and, and talk to one of us on the summer program staff and we can, we can help guide you um, in, that, in that way. Somebody has asked, uh, how late are the computer labs open? Uh, in the Newberry building, they are open until 10 p.m. during the week, uh, until 6 p.m. on Saturday, and then until 8 p.m. on Sunday. So you should have plenty of time to work in the Newberry labs to complete your assignments. Uh, somebody has asked, are there copies of any of the uh, required textbooks in the main university library? Uh, I can't answer specifically about uh, textbooks, but I can give you uh, the website for the UM library. It's live, lib.umich.edu. You're welcome to go there and use their online catalog to search for required textbooks that um, you might find listed in the syllabi for your courses. Uh, somebody has asked, uh, if certain workshops require software that we don't own, will we be given a license for free or temporary access or only remote access? Edward, could you answer this? Sure. Um, all of the software that you'll be using in the summer program is available in a virtual desktop environment, which you will be able to access uh, from any of the computers in the computer lab or from your own personal computer. If your workshop is using Stata, we can provide you with a limited term license so that you can install Stata on your personal computer. And that license is valid through the end of August. And you also have the option to purchase Stata at discounted pricing because of your participation in the program. For other commercial software, we do not distribute licenses or installation of computers, so you would need to use the virtual environment. All right, thank you. Um, I had a little bit of a difficult time hearing what you said. Um, and if others did as well, I can say that we do have a, a website that has all the information about computing software.
offer that's available, available to participants, and we'll give you a link to that website uh, next week when you show up for check-in. So you're um, welcome to read that info, or you're welcome to stop by um, the office of our computing staff here in the Newberry Building when you arrive. Somebody has asked, until when is the library open? So the Newberry Library is open um, the same amount of hours as the computer lab here in the Newberry building. Uh, for the UM Library, um, their hours are posted on their website. And like I said, we'll get you um, a link to that uh, here in the coming days with the participant handbook. Somebody has asked, is it possible to audit a course without receiving a grade? Uh, yes, you can. You can sit in on any of the workshops or lectures, and you do not have to elect to receive a grade for it. Uh, if you would like to request a grade letter memorandum uh, for a workshop, then you'll want to let your instructors and TAs know and then plan to do all of the assignments and show up for all of the courses for that workshop. Uh, somebody has asked, will lunch or dinner ever be provided for participants? Unfortunately, no. Um, we do have a few occasions, like the picnics or a welcome party, where we provide uh, some wonderful food for you guys to eat. But otherwise, meals uh, are your responsibility while you're here uh, with the summer program. I will say that that's another good reason to go to the Blaylock lectures presentations, because they have been known to also provide lots of treats to help you get through the evening. I can't say that those are full meals, but uh, they do help in terms of making sure that uh, you can go an extra hour or so. Yes, that's something you'll find. We always, always have treats around. So I would recommend that you uh, make stopping by the Newberry building part of your daily schedule because um, there tends to be food on the back lounge. Um, so for grabs, first come, first served. So. Uh, somebody has asked, um, will we be able to use our laptops for homework or do you have to use the lab? You are welcome to use your own laptop. It's whatever is most convenient for you. Uh, somebody has asked about EITM certification um, and if they can receive a certificate uh, even when they take just a single course, which is above regression two. I think I understand your question. Um, Sandy or Dieter, would you like to kind of maybe give a little bit more clarity about EITM certification? Yeah, it, you can receive certification. The The question really is, you know, again, the grade that you receive and to make sure that the grade report that, that you obtain in that workshop is high enough so that you can get the, the certification. Stephanie, I would, what would, uh, this is Dieter. I would like to go back to the question about software in case the, uh, some of the participants didn't hear Edward, as you mentioned. Um, uh, Edward and his team will set up a facility so that anybody, whether using their own laptop or using the summer program computers in our labs, can access a virtual desktop uh, through the, uh, a website. Uh, and from that virtual desktop, there's all the software for all the courses will be available. So it's not just that you'll have to um, purchase any software in advance or coming here or just happen to have it. All the software for all the courses will be available that way. So I just wanted to say that in case somebody wasn't sure about it. Great, thank you. Uh, somebody has asked about public safety in Ann Arbor and if walking back home after evening lectures is recommended. Sandy, would you like to address that? Ann Arbor is a universe, primarily a university environment and I always recommend when you're on a university campus that you are cognizant aware of your surroundings. And that's particularly true in the evenings. And to ensure that we recommend that if you're going from one building to the next or from one class back home or back to your uh, apartment or the, the sublease that you have, that you make arrangements to do that with someone else. Um, I would recommend that at any on any university campus, and that's that's my suggestion here in Ann Arbor. We try not to um, you know provide the kind of situation where you're going to feel unsafe and uncomfortable, but some of this you know is out of our control because we're part of the 
community of Ann Arbor and uh, we, we want to make sure when you're involved in the summer program that it's as safe as possible so again my recommendation is just be conscious of where you are and think ahead to get a companion get someone to, to go with you if you're particularly if you're leaving the workshops late at night or, or leaving a lab late at night you, know, you want to have somebody along we have a question about grabbing lunch in between cla uh, classes and networking during that time so whenever you take lunch is kind of up to you depending upon your schedule i can say that uh, there are plenty of uh, options uh, for restaurants that are within walking distance of campus. And when I say walking distance, I mean one or two minutes away from campus uh, and from your classrooms. So if you um, don't pack a lunch, um, then you're going to find a lot of options um, that you can get to really quickly and then get back to uh, classes or get back to your homework. Um, a lot of people and uh, a lot of participants in our classes go to lunch together, go to dinner together. And so um, meals are a great time to network um, with other participants here in the summer program. And then if you are somebody who likes to pack a lunch um, because you cook really well or you like to save money, you're welcome to uh, store that in the Newberry building. We have fridges on the second and third floors and those are open to participants. So you're welcome to put your lunch in there during the day to keep it cold. Somebody has asked how the courses are graded and will there be a final exam? Sandy? The, the courses are primarily um, designed so that you are asked to do exercises, homeworks during the four weeks, approximately one and a half exercises or homeworks per week. And based upon your performance, how well you do on those assignments, then the teaching assistants and the instructors will assign a grade report which indicates how you're doing and also gives you some sense of how you're performing relative to other members of that workshop. Once again, there are, there are no grade reports in the lectures, uh, but they are, there are grade reports in all of the workshops. The examinations, we used to have a couple of workshops asking that participants do examinations by and large those no longer exist and the, the ones that do exist are have been set up as more optional so that if you want to see what you would do on an exam you would be you would have the the pleasure uh, of taking that exam but most of most of the workshops are going to ask that you do exercises computing assignments and that you work through the problems and issues that they've discussed in class and that that's the basis of, of the grade report. Thank you. Somebody has asked about waiting to order their textbooks until they get here. Uh, so if you know what courses you're, you're going to take and you don't really plan to switch around, um, we would encourage you to get your textbooks now since you're having to order them online. If you're still not sure and you would like to take a few days to kind of sit in on classes and figure out your schedule, um, you're welcome to um, use books from the Newberry Library uh, if they are available uh, and then have books mailed to you while you're here in the summer program. Uh, you can either have them mailed to your address where you're staying at or if that's not an option, you can have them sent uh, to us. Um, we will have a mailing address that's in the handbook. Uh, and I kind of sound like a broken record, but there's a lot of great information in your handbook. So when you get that in a couple of days, we really encourage you to take a look at it and read it front to back um, because you're going to find a lot of resources that we just weren't able to cover because of time uh, here in the webinar. Uh, we have a question about um, whether or not it's reasonable to take um, workshops from one to three and then three to five and whether um, a person would be able to get from those two courses uh, during that time and if 10 minutes between classes would be enough. So like I said, the campus here is really walkable and we have plenty of people who take back-to-back -back workshops. Your instructors will give you 10 minutes to get um, from one workshop to another before starting uh, and we find that that's plenty of time to get from courses, um, to get from one course to another, even those that are in different buildings across campus. 
Somebody has asked, what is the distribution of lecture and lab time during the two, uh, during the daily two-hour sessions? Uh, Dieter or Sandy, could you maybe speak to that? I'm sorry, Stephanie, can you repeat that, the distribution of what? I think somebody wants to know um, kind of how a workshop would break down in terms of lecture versus lab time. So, so workshops uh, in general, they're two hours long. So that's two hours of contact in the classroom with the instructor. Instructors generally will be lecturing, although sometimes they may go over uh, other kind of material. They may have a mini lab session, but that's usually not the case. Uh, mostly it's lectures. Uh, lab times really depend on the courses. So uh, some of them, the instructors and TAs will have um, homework assignments, lab assignments that you do on your own. If you have questions, then you can come to the instructors or especially the TA's office hours uh, and ask them questions and they can give you assistance. You can work with other uh, people in your class on things like that, the homework assignments or, or lab assignments. Sometimes TAs will either have informal lab meetings in the computer labs in Newberry uh, or formal uh, times outside of the, the regular class times in buildings, uh, classrooms uh, here around the central campus. Uh, when those happen, the, you know, the TA instructor will announce it in class and will let you know. And if it's here in Newberry, we'll put up signs. So you'll know if there's anything that's informal or, or formal as far as extra lab times. Great, thank you. Um, I would like to tell everybody, uh, if you haven't yet followed us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, I, I would encourage you to do so. Um, we post a lot of uh, information about events uh, and different goings on, including if there's food in the back lounge of Newberry, uh, on our social pages. And then we also uh, put photos up there um, that we take throughout the session. So uh, follow us on all three of those. You can find links to it from our homepage. And uh, looking at our question box, it looks like the well has run dry, so I hope we answered all your questions. If not, uh, you can always call us or send us an email, uh, or you can just ask them next Monday during check-in. Looks like that's going to be it for today. Sandy, do you want to say a final goodbye? I just wanted to make sure that, uh, again, uh, emphasize what Stephanie just said. If you do have any follow-up questions or if you had a question and forgot it and now it's coming to mind or comes to mind remainder of this week or early next week, please do contact us in any way that you feel comfortable. And we're really looking forward to your coming to Ann Arbor, or if you're already here in Ann Arbor, to um, joining us in the summer program. <laughs>